Welcome once again to Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Joining you from glorious eastern Los Angeles. And I will AKA add, the surface of the sun. The surface of the sun. And we're outside. We don't have cover. You know, normally we have cover. If you're watching us here on YouTube, if you're listening to us, disregard this part of the show altogether. I will also add here in eastern Los Angeles a stone's throw away from Cal State LA where Vince school is back in session. You know how I know? How? Couldn't find a parking spot. Uh-oh. That's why you got to get here early, bro. Well, the parking <laughs> the parking lot that I use is probably for seven, 800 parking spots. Mm -hmm. So for the last two months, I've been the only car in the lot. You have. The yeah. only car. And Max with his fancy car has to park it well away from, you don't want to yeah. get dinged. No. That's a Los Angeles thing. You know what though? I, no, no, my rule of thumb is I want to be close to the, uh, the kiosk so I can get the ticket. You know how college works though. That's my rule of thumb. Give it two weeks. Give it two weeks. That yeah. will be wide open. <laughs> Everybody. Everyone comes the first week of school. After like, that, uh, it's hit like, or miss. It's like the gym after, uh, after vacation. You yeah. come right and then it, it cools off. So we are back here and uh, we're back here. Uh, we enjoy it. We might get a little clammy in front of you for those yeah, on the visual side. Yeah, for any continuity experts, notice that we're going to have a great guest uh, and we're somehow sweatier uh, on, than yeah. when we started with the guest. So if you didn't put it two and two together, we did the guest interview first. We are not complaining by any means. I just don't want you to go, what is going on over there? I will say two? it could you be guys... worse. It actually has been worse the it past couple of weeks here. This is it somewhat been, nice. Look, there's heat waves. There's all sorts of crazy weather everywhere. It's been, we should, could use some rain here. But uh, it hasn't been that hot. You know, I've gone to places, yeah. you go to places where it's uh, unbearable. So it's not, it's not the heat. That wherever you are in heat and you're probably telling me to get lost, I apologize. Yeah. It's the humidity, and it's not that humid here, luckily. <laughs> and that's been our forecast. Let's move on. Let's talk about Let's LAFC. move on the, because the LAFC uh, winning big, streak is no more. It's no more, but it's still a big week. Still a big week. One of the biggest games, certainly, of the year when you just look at And it's crazy to think about it because mm -hmm. LAFC and Austin FC, neither of which made the postseason. Right. right now, the top two dogs in the West, two of the top three teams in MLS, and they will meet. Uh, it was at Q2 Stadium down there yes. in Austin, Texas. On a Friday night. Friday, Friday night, night football. Lights. Friday night lights in Texas. It means a little bit more. And this is coming after a Saturday game for LFC. So we're going to preview that. We're going to put uh, final thoughts on the San Jose game. I'm also going to tell you uh, special guest, Oka Nikolov, who is the goalkeeper coach here on the staff of LAFC and really a, a, a rock star of a goalkeeper Back in the day, over 400 appearances for Eintracht Frankfurt. I mean, one of the top goalkeepers in the Bundesliga during his time. Uh, if you, uh, have, you have 400 appearances in the Bundesliga, you're a top goalkeeper. Yes. I mean, that's getting into Manuel Neuer territory. Manuel, 400 appearances. One club. Yeah. One club. And he's incredibly thoughtful. Uh, this is for you, goalkeepers. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, kids out there listening. They're like, you know, I get to hear about strikers or midfield, even defenders, but we don't do too many goalkeeper stuff. Although we have had Maxime Cropot on yeah. three times, two times? Two times. Two times. But this was a really good talk uh, about some of where the goalkeeper position's going, what's important in it. I, I think you and I became exponentially smarter just from that 10-minute conversation. And, and uh, less sweatier somehow Yeah. because of uh, <laughs> how we look right now. I, it's also, I, I get a, a hoot out of this because when I was at Fox, I've told you this story at Fox sports world at the time i think it was 1999 and i was doing argentine soccer and the bosses say we need someone to do bundesliga if you're a modern uh fan of the game you probably can't believe this discussion but we had every broad we had every league under one cha you, 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 the, cha the champions league just sold for 150 million a year yep two billion dollars per. well we had them all under one network and many of them gave us the rights for free this was like 22 three years ago wow so we how did times that have changed. how times have changed so we did at every league, including the Bundesliga. Did you call the games for free? Uh, at first, I did. <laughs> at first, I did. I was, a, I was in the, the uh, scheduling department, and I said, do you need an extra announcer? Go, we have no budget. I'll do them for free. That was the conversation. That is how you got your big break? Yep. You were in the scheduling department. They needed someone to fill in, and you well, just... Well, I didn't need it, but there was one guy, and he was getting overwhelmed because was, mm -hmm. it was like nine games a day. Right. It was Germany, English rap, Italian or Spain, French league... Argentine, Chilean, Colombian. Okay. They need a broadcast. And from the first one where they like, you could probably do this for, yeah. or, or did it take some time? I think it was more like, hey, this guy's doing it for free, so let's just. Oh, okay. And then you got good. Then I got a little bit of, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, thank you, Vince. Oh, but then you I were got... saying about Bundesliga. I so I did it, and the first game I did was Eintracht Frankfurt and Kaiserslautern. I remember Eintracht Frankfurt had this Norwegian striker by the name of Jan Aga Fjortoft, and I thought his name was 
funny. And now he is a big pundit in the U.S. I, on ESPN FC. On ESPN FC. And uh, also following uh, Holland around everywhere Correct. Uh, for Man City. It seems like anytime Man City plays and then Pep goes and, and you hear the first question, it's Jan Olga Fluertov saying. Yeah. He's cashing it. But he was a good player and yeah. he was a teammate of Oka's. And uh, Kaiser Slaughter were really good back then. I don't know where they are. They could be in the third division. But they were the I champions. They are, they are in right Bundesliga around. 2 now. But yeah. is it good? And um, it was, uh, I remember Oka Nikolov playing a goal. So that was my first Bundesliga game, first European game, because I did Argentine and Chilean before that. Isn't it interesting how many like weird coincidences you've had since you've come to LAFC? Because you called the game, Benny Fellhaber, obviously the famous goal for the national right. team in the Gold Cup. Uh, there's been a few others where we've been like, hey, who called Two that worlds game? worlds colliding. And, and sometimes you'll... Sometimes you're proud of it, and sometimes you'll sheepishly go, I think I was oh, calling that uh, game. John Thorrington, uh, when I was in the hiring process, Larry Friedman brought up a clip that of me calling John Thorrington's game, and for some reason I called him Hot Rod. And I go, hot I don't Rod know what, Hot I Rod, I don't know why that came to mind, but Larry thought it was hilarious, and I wonder if it helped me, or maybe I, I, was, I wasn't going to get the job, and John said, hire me, he's a good guy, but don't call him, don't call me you Hot Rod. You would never call me, is it, it might be in your <laughs> contract. Never call him Hot Rod. It is weird, know. the coincidences. Look at Larry Freeman being a little bit of agent for you, pumping you. I know. You he loved it. Nice. He goes, this is great. I go, thank you, Larry. Well, he also loves a certain uh, take me out to the ball game done by yes. John Thorrington, which he Not likes as... to play all the time. Larry, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, John now is no longer embarrassed by it because it's been played so many times. Correct. Correct. So here we go. So Oka and Nikolov stick around for that. We won't talk about me at all. I just get it out of the system now. Talk about goalkeeping. We'll talk about. I still think it's pretty cool. LA. But we'll move I on. thought so too. I think if I was ever going to use this story, Vince, this was the moment. Yes. Let's talk about San Jose. Disappointing. Uh, 2 1 loss. Uh, rotation of the lineup, which we will talk about here. And by necessity, this was obviously going to be the game where you could do it. You had the two home games against. Charlotte and D.C. United, where you don't want to go alternative because you have the creature comforts of home and you have two teams that you should be able to beat. You certainly take your chances here. LAFC, rotation-wise, when you look at that 11, still very strong. Uh, this was, as we all saw, a very difficult field to play on. We asked people here, and they all concurred. And it all had the recipes of being a game where it probably gets away from you. And in a league where it's very hard to maintain these winning streaks, that something like this could happen. One of those where you really hope you can get something out of the game. Yeah. You're not surprised and almost when did. you don't. And, but you almost did. It, it really felt that way. I mean, I got a chance to talk to Steve when we were doing In Touch with Steve Trenolo, which is, comes out Thursdays on, uh, on LFC's YouTube channel. But he mentioned, it's not just, so a lot of people are putting it a lot into three games in eight days. But they look even beyond that. They forecast beyond that. They say, wow, our schedule is going to get congested again in August. So where and when can we possibly give these guys a rest? Because we're going to need to. It's not, there's not going to be very many more chances. And they looked at the schedule, and they said two home games and one game on the road and a three game in eight days. I got to think that they're thinking, let's prioritize those games at home. Make sure you get three points at home. And that's what they came down to. I don't think it... And I, it paid off because you got the two wins. I really think, and I didn't, I didn't get a chance to act, ask him this because it was a short, and I don't even know if he would answer this, but it, it had nothing really to do with San Jose. It was like just a road game. Like if it would have been a road game in Seattle, I think they would have thought about rotating because maximize your points at home and then see what you can get out of road games. They already have seven road wins, which is an amazing record. And if they don't win another road game from this point off, that is still a tremendous. That's a good haul. That's a good of haul road points. of road points. But they're going to get some wins. They're going to yeah. get some wins because they have a lot of road games. So uh, let's talk about the rotation. We'll have our three points of emphasis here. And the rotation saw some peculiar ones. We saw Ryan Holling said up at the attack. We, we talked to Ryan a lot here, and he's mm -hmm. always, I'll play anywhere. That's, he's that guy. Right. And we've seen him in the midfield against D.C. United. Now you saw him in the front three as well. He's a little bit in the front three against D.C. United also. And then even the game prior, Charlotte. We saw our depth for the midfield. Uh, mm -hmm. Seba Mendez and uh, Latif Blessing coming on. And Kellen Acosta, who I think we agree was... The best player? Him and Mahala. Him and Mahala. The two of them. In the back of that midfield, so they rested Ilya Sifu. And um, we're able to bring their fourth and fifth in that battery of midfielders up in there. To be expected, it, it, it had some pains. It certainly Yeah, did. I think ultimately, you know, the sport, although it's 11 players and you have tactics, you have a game model, a lot of times you have these little partnerships across the pitch, and guys kind of know where guys are at. I think we talked a little bit, a little bit about it yesterday on LAFC 360. We said, you know, Cheeky was getting, they were going everything down that left side of LAFC, the right side of San Jose. Why were they doing that? And I, and I thought it might have been because, you know, you have Mendez in there, and the understanding between Mendez and Cheeky isn't the same as Kellen and Cheeky. Hey, 
are you covering me? Do I have enough space to get back on that, you know, on that attacker? And I think Espinoza just kind of looked into that. Tommy Thompson also, they really tried to overload that side uh, and just do that. But just all across the pitch, you have Hollingshead, who I think is a good option as a winger and can play as a winger because he's that talented technically. Top scoring defender in MLS. Yes, and he's, he's a tall guy, he's a strong guy, but they just didn't have those partnerships where they moved the ball fluidly. The guys didn't, because LAFC's format and the style of play is, is very intuitive. Um, and although they were able to pull some things off, it just it wasn't quite there. It was a step off. And then you couple that with the field. <laughs> the field was a, a major factor in this game. I, I guess at the end of the day, you walk away and thankfully no one got injured yeah. because uh, a rolled ankle or what have you. But you could see some guys couldn't even put their foot on the grass before sliding. It was guys like changing it, shoes. It, it was like that walking onto an ice rink kind of feeling. Yeah. You know, with it's it was very odd in many times. I did want to p touch on this really quickly because it's going to play into the rest of our conversations. Obviously, there's a lot going on uh, being reported or rumors or what have you. Um, Brian Rodriguez, we, he was here, and we will let how that flesh out. We're not here to speculate or anything. We're here to cover the team. So, uh, obviously, things are going, and something might happen by the time we're, we're by off By the time the this launches, but we'll say we saw him here yeah. in person on Tuesday. So, all this, uh, we're not saying anything's not true or anything, but it's, it, it, there's a lot to be fleshed out. That's where it stands right now. The, and that certainly affect how things are lined up here in the in this game, certainly against San Jose. Uh, number two point of emphasis and being able to be in a position, you're down a goal, you still feel good about getting a result against San Jose. And you did tie this game, bringing in those guys that you rested, Carlos Vela, Ilya Sanchez, Jose Cifuentes. That was uh, a good good sub. That was a, quite a sub, shift. Talk about a window. Yeah. <laughs> when you can bring in Elias Sanchez, Carlos Vela, and Jose C. Fuentes in one swoop. Yeah. And, and then and then still have Gareth Bale in reserve. Gareth later Bale, on in the game. Eddie Segura. I'm remarkable, and the depth's going to pay this team well, especially as they get all healthy, which they've never really quite been all season, where everyone is ready to go. Mm. Uh, Ilya Sanchez getting a, two very quick yellow cards and then the red. I mean, who knows what's – this is a – they came in with emphasis. They wanted to press. They wanted to, to get a result here. They – winning streak, something they take seriously. Well, you went into this game. You rotated. Horrible 45 minutes, right? Like, yeah. I think we can all agree that was, that was a rough watch for everyone. They, they're down a goal, but then – the combination, the father-son combination, Kellen uh, to uh, Mahalo, which everyone's been, it's fun. Their, their relationship's fun. Uh, but that, I, I can't emphasize how much that, that pass was fantastic. The softness, the angle, uh, the timing, the run, the in, angle, in the, the timing. the blind spot, too. And then the of finish. The, defender, yeah. the finish, incredible. So they get that, and then it's like, hey, there might be something on offer here. And that's kind of how you look at a rotated game. You say, I got to get our guys some rest. I don't want to give more than 45 minutes to a Carlos Vela, to an Ilié, to a Gareth. But if we're in the game and we can use our depth in ways where basically we say, hey, it's, about, it's like a training session now. Let's get 45 minutes in your legs. Let's get you moving out there. There was something on offer. It was just they could never corral the game. And it, the game actually got a little more stretched. And then, you know, some errors come in there. I'd say, I think Ilya would say, you know, that was an accident. Um, but it, in the grand scheme of things, it turns out when you ha you're on a yellow, you got to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, it wasn't a malicious stomp or anything. No. It caught him the wrong way. It was mistimed. The problem is any referee can have that conversation with the player and say, the ball's over there. I have no choice. Anytime you step on the back of a guy's heel, it just looks bad. It looks bad. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be tr it's going to be tough to win that, although you certainly could tell there wasn't any malice there, just a mistimed hit. Forced the team down to 10 players. Uh, LAFC looked all right with 10 in many cases. Uh, with the Still talent a chance they had to win there. at the end. Still or had not a win chance. It's, hard, it's, hard, it's tied at the end. Well, they had the Murillo chance too to bail. There was like two yeah. or three looks there that they could have done it. It was very exciting. But uh, that leads, we'll talk about Austin and Ilya in a little bit, but they're not going to have them. And we know there's five players that they could put in the midfield, and now that's down to four. Right. All four are going to play against Austin. And Ilya, more than anything, who's a good passer, an organizer, that is going to be pretty sorely missed. Yeah. I mean, I... I, I, I'm sure they've already got it, got it, thinking about it. And we can say this, Kellen Acosta is a fantastic six, the way that he plays. But when you move him from his position where he's kind of, a, he covers a lot of ground and he's that extra little bit of quality going forward from that eight position into the six, then you've got to have a guy that has got big shoes to fill. So Kellen's not only filling big shoes in Ilié, but then the next guy up has to fill big shoes in Kellen. So as you start to put those pieces together, but I do think, I. Look, Seba, Seba Mendez didn't have his best game, uh, but I don't think... But it was his first start. Sorry. It was his first start uh, under interesting circumstances where, again, he's playing with a lot of guys that are kind of new in positions and they're not quite sure where they're supposed to be. I would say in the games that he's come in, 
He's been good. Yeah, more than ser- more than serviceable. He's been clean on the ball, and this just wasn't his day. So I still have faith in him filling into that position. I th- I think that he's the best example. But I also have faith in Latif Blessing coming in. So look, it's not one of those things where you're like, oh my God, we're putting someone who's never played the six in there. You're putting a very good player into the six, and then you have some options at that eight position. Obviously, we, we think. Sifu starts the game because he's been so incredible. So we don't even worry about that kind of advanced eight, more of a free eight that gets into the attack. It's just how you figure out how you put Kellen at the six and that other kind of cover guy. Yeah. And you got to play pretty close to the vest because you have those four guys. They can certainly go a little deeper, but with their five substitutions with all the uh, the already battle-tested guys they have, they'll probably want to go a different direction. Mm -hmm. But something to keep in mind, we'll continue that preview of Austin in a moment. Third point, physical game. We saw it. We right. saw it also uh, to two in a row. Two in a row. DC United, the same kind of thing. And uh, they push. Uh, LAFC is pushing back as well. And that's something you're probably going to see in the postseason because everyone's taking tabs. When they play LAFC, how do you compete against them? Look, I was looking at the standings. Like if the season ended now, you, your playoff opponent could be a Minnesota or Nashville. And you're there. They'll find ways physical to see what other teams yeah. do that can test you. Uh, so that's some homework you could do. And I think that's valuable to a coaching staff. Says, Look, that's what it's going to feel like. That's what it's going to look like. Mark and remember. Yeah, good to have those. Especially, you know, they are still nine points up, right? So in a lot of ways, they're cruising in a little bit. You want them to get some of these games under their belt and see some instances where you maybe have to stand down and not get too aggressive because you don't want to be the guy that retaliates. Because I think it is going to be, it's, it's actually just a straight tactic of teams. LFC, someone gets by you on LFC, just kick them. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. There's, it's, it's the Portland tactic, but I think more teams have kind of uh, brought it on, and they've seen that LFC can struggle a little bit, but this year more than ever, I, I feel like they're not standing down, though. It's different to struggle, and it's one to not, like, to actually be sheepish, and I think they're actually standing up to the challenge. It's just it's still hard when someone's kicking you and, out there, and I think that at least they have the mentality of we're not going to back down, we're not going to look away. That's the veteran leadership, I think. But it's now how do you then still let your quality show through when the team's trying to trying to get the kicks in the dc and i have a really good lather going yeah you do here. i don't know how it got that i mean it's like a faucet do you think they'll let us jump in the, in the pools after uh, the cold tub would be great it would be remy tushan was a referee at dc united who remy tushan was it remy? never heard of him no but he, he no i believe you that that's his name but if remy tushan walked right up to the camera right now and said hi i'm remy tushan actually i know what the referees look like he's actually pretty striking uh referee he's got the good hair yeah but Great the DC United game, he popped the yellows. So yeah. if you get a physical match, you hope that happens in LAFC. Where it doesn't always happen, but that was where the referee gave yellows, and eventually a red card would be shown to uh, Steve Birnbaum. Steve Birnbaum, yeah. Uh, you would love that if you're LAFC. You might get that. You might not. And nothing. Can't count on it's it. It's not the right way or the wrong way. That's how the referees interpret the game. You just can't count on it. So you can't count on it. So, again, food for thought. Let's preview this Austin game. It's a big game. I'm really excited for this game. I got really excited because Emi Rigoni, who's this Argentine player that Austin just signed from Sao Paulo, uh, reportedly for $4 million, which is a lot for an MLS club. It's really a lot for any club. Mm -hmm. And he comes in, and they asked him about the game. And he's like, yeah, we're not worried about LFC. I'm like, whoa, you never hear this. A guy just got off the plane. He says he probably doesn't know anything on MLS. Not only does he know it, but he already calling out the opponent. A little. Give me that all day. Give me that all day, even though it's an opponent. Maybe he, hopefully LFC changes his mind. Right. But give me that all day. And that's this is an, an event, and we've never seen it before. LAFC, Austin FC, for an important game, which you could classify the one in May, May the 18th, which Austin won at Bank of California Stadium, 2-1, to one, only home loss of the season. Now it leads to this. It's nine points. Clearly, it's a much – I say this clearly. It's a very important game for LFC. But this is almost do or die if you want to catch LAFC. Yeah. If you're Austin FC. So six, much more important to them. It's your six-pointer. Yeah. Right? It re- I mean, because it really is. It's either you're up 12 points or you're only six points ahead. So it's it's a big matchup. I, I love it. I, lo- I do love uh, he gave a little Sheshar Cat-esque smile, yeah. too. Like, he knew what he was doing. It's great. I, I don't know. Maybe in the locker room there might be some Austin players that are like, hey, can we just, just tamp it down? Don't tell them you tamper know, down. There's tell Keelinis, them to bring there's it. There's Bales. There's Velas on that team. Maybe we don't want that. But as us as neutrals, we want that. We need more games like this because we all cry out. What does the regular season even mean if so many teams can get in and then MLS Cup is on offer and it's a one-off game? But this guy wants it, like, and he's fresh. So more inject more of that. We need more guys that say, hey, I'm not afraid of them, and bring it. because I know who they home. are. Yeah, they're coming to our home, and this is a big game, and we're going to take it seriously, and we want to win. 
It is a big game. I love the fact that no one would have expected this to be a big game preseason. Nope. Uh, LAFC had a rough season last year. They actually beat Austin three times mm -hmm. and twice at their park. So, I mean, this was a game I would have expected KCOP to get, but we didn't get it. It's on ESPN. Yep. So uh, good, good foresight because now it's a Friday night extravaganza with really the top two coaches in the league in 2022 and the top two teams in the West. I don't know how Austin has done it. You wait for them to kind of fall by the wayside. They're not. They, the way they play, an attacking brand, they have as many goals as LAFC. They actually have more goals now. Yep. And they win on the road. They have a great MVP candidate. Sebastian Driussi's got Oddly 18 enough, goals. enough, they don't win as much at home. They don't. So there's a, that's the window, right? However, they are incredibly good at comebacks. Eight wins on the road. Eight wins on the road, the more wins on the road than LAFC has. They also have this knack of they can go down three to one and they can turn those around and win four to three. I I don't know how well that's gonna work against LAFC. I think if LAFC goes up three to one, they're much more they're much better at controlling the game. But I you you've seen it. Austin's done it, so I can't doubt them for it. So I, I just I wanna see a game where it's back and forth. There's there's goals and then there's lead changes, uh, two teams going at it with with some pace. It's gonna be hot. Even though it's the 7 o'clock kickoff there in Austin, it's still going to be hot, so we'll see how much the heat plays into it. But you want all the stars to be in this game. You want Gareth Bale to feature. You want Carlos Vela to feature. You want Giorgio Chiellini to be back in. And by the way, we did see Gareth Bale and Giorgio Chiellini in training, so uh, hope, we're hopeful that they'll play a part in it. It's still early, um, so I can't tell you what part they'll play, but they'll definitely be in the mix. Um, this, is, this is a game that MLS has to say we need. We, I, I can't reiterate it enough. More of these. Indeed. Rigoni might play, supposedly, uh, according to Joshua. Uh, Austin, again, the comebacks are uh, still chance, prolific. Still because, chance Buanga could get here. Yeah, Denny Buanga, we'll, we'll wait and see. But it's got to, and again, you said it really well on LAFC 360, because uh, people might be getting frustrated, but because of his lack of uh, work visa in the United States, the process is going to take very long, and we're seeing it now. Other players, it's a little quicker, because maybe they spend some time here in the U.S. In Especially the, the example, of course, is Ricky Pooch, who... Played for Barcelona, has been on multiple tours to the United States with Barcelona, so he's had a tourist visitor visa at one time. Oddly enough, so he's that, in, so he's in the he's in the system. Yes, oddly enough, that actually helps your chances of converting it quickly to a work visa and then getting here. And if you've never had it, good luck. You're you're in kind of that limbo bureaucracy land that Danny Buanga is now in. But I have heard, I've been speaking, doing some intel. There is somebody over there with him, from LAFC, making sure that he's staying in shape. So that when he does land, because he's already had a full preseason, he his fitness is at a level where he can hit the ground running. So they think of everything. They do. So as much as you're frustrated. Let's go for a run. Yes, as much as you're frustrated, they have taken precautions to make sure that, you know, if this does keep extending and he lands, let's say he gets in here on a Wednesday night, there's still a possibility he could be available off the bench because he's going to have that fitness level. Guy's got to be chomping at the bit. Yeah, he yeah. wants to play, right? I mean, he's probably he's looking at this game. Oh, get, let's get in there. Right. Uh, and right, and LAFC in a great position. Uh, they've got they got cover in the, the, those positions where Denny Buanga would play right now. So even if he was here, we would would he would he break in and feature? Probably not. But uh, not from the start. Break, break right? him in there yeah. a little bit. Bring him in so. slow, just like he's done with Giorgio Chiellini and Gareth Bale. It's tremendous. So uh, this table is set. Yeah, soak it all in and enjoy it. Austin FC um, talking a big game. They deserve it. Look, they. Uh, you, you, you talk about the comeback games. I was, I, I was going to say, it's, it's not just like a one zip. We tied it. It was like 3-1, 3-3, 4-1. So they can really score. So, I mean, the prospects of an entertaining, memorable game mm -hmm. are very higher. Um, Steve said something on the In Touch show, which I thought was interesting. He goes, Austin's almost like a carbon copy of us in many ways. Mm. Uh, he didn't just say that, but something they're very similar teams. The styles of play. Styles of play. The only thing is we defend a little better. So that obviously hit me and said, that's probably your key to, to getting a result. And we'll hear more about Oka Nikolov and his con connection with Maxime Crepeau, but that back line probably is what gets you a result in some way, shape, or form yeah, here. Yeah, to that point, I, I was thinking about it. Like, what will this game hinge on? And I think it's going to be those defensive transitions. Now, LA, LAFC is going to miss Ilya. Again, we, we still think that Kellen Acosta is more than a good six that can fill those in. But there's those little moments where you react a little bit differently, and it can be all about reaction, especially when a guy like Sebastian Driussi is running the other way behind you. And then I think Austin's biggest problem last season was they were not good at defensive transition. They would get forward. They would play some pretty football. When it wouldn't come off, teams could just run right up the gut. They've gotten better at it, 
but it snuck in a little bit more where they haven't defended it quite well. So I think if you look at one thing that this game could turn on, it's to Steve's point, if LAFC's tight defensively and defense transition well, and then how well Austin does it does the same. They're a good team. I know you look at Maxi Ruti and Diego Fagundes, and you think these are guys that anyone could have brought into their club, but they have. It, it's a perfect marriage, and it's great to see that these guys reinvent themselves and do so well for an elite club right now in MLS. Austin's going to probably finish no worse than third or fourth. My guess is they finish second. Mm -hmm. uh, that LAFC game, remember, they were up two goals till very late. So yeah, it wasn't like... Strong push towards the end. It was a good finish, by, like but Austin team, had though. it, you know. It's a real different team, though, I feel like, don't you? Yeah. It was very early in the season. Eh, not that early. Not like March, April early. I know, but remember we were, remember, remember that at that point of the season, we were always talking about, like, when are we going to have a quick start? I haven't talked about that in a while. Yeah. Like, the, the complete games have kind of come together. I just feel like it is a slightly different team. And I think it's the best time. That May matchup was good, and it was a fun game, but this one is, this is heavyweight-esque, yeah. the way the two teams are playing. And like Steve said, they're going to they're gonna want to play, too, yeah. which is great. They are going to want to play, and that could be the, the worst possible situation for Austin as LAFC lay in wait to see if they can get them with a nice counterpunch or something along that nature. Tactics are going to be interesting. Tactics are going to be interesting. Friday night, make sure you check it out. Yeah, I think it's ESPN2 uh, and get all the action there. We have Oka Nikolov coming up. If you are a goalkeeper, a young goalkeeper, or you know somebody, tell them to tune in so they can get some great know-how because we are fortunate beyond belief to have an elite world-class goalkeeper here at LAFC who has that perspective from uh, a, a, global, a global perspective, mm -hmm. and he's bringing it here for Maxime Crepeau and for this entire team to benefit from. Yep, must listen. If you're a young kid that's a goalkeeper, you're going to want to check this out. Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. We'll take a quick break. I'll jump in the cold tub. We'll be back with Oka. Welcome back to Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast, as we give you access from every angle. And now we're doing it from the back of the park as we're joined by Oka Nikoloff, the LAFC goalkeeper coach, which doesn't do the title justice because I know you guys are involved in everything that you do and I, that everything the club does. And uh, we were excited about having a goalkeeper here because we want to peel back the layers of Maybe some misperceptions. Is there one that's out there about goalkeepers that drives you Is a little crazy? Is there one? <laughs> or one at the top of the list about how the soccer fan, the football fan, views goalkeepers? Um, maybe the, the biggest one is um, you just realize a goalkeeper if, when you have a, a great game or a bad game. Mm, when you do one. his job, it's like, oh, all right, but it's not that easy just to do your job. Right. So the recognition that you just do your job is, uh, for me, a little bit too low. Yeah. I need to follow up on that because I, I think people need to do it. Because this is Max's it. fault. Okay, this is my fault. No. But w when I started covering this sport, people would say, all right, watch one player here and see what they do. And obviously it's harder with the goalkeeper um, unless you're there, but to see what they can do and see what, the, what job they are. Obviously they can't do that on TV as much, but if they're at the stadium, they want to understand what a goalkeeper does, what should they be looking for? Uh, to keep the ball out of the net. <laughs> <laughs> I knew yeah, it. No, it's... Um, it's, it's tough to explain what you have to do. It's uh, like, especially for us, LFC is like we at home, we attack a lot. So we play high line. So Max or our goalies have to play also high line to be like kind of a sweeper for the long balls. It's um, and um, it also like they don't get that much action because right. we are pretty dominant at home. So we we have the ball a lot. So it's um, it's it's not that easy and sometimes you just get one shot on goal and it's, it's a goal so it's kind of frustrating for our goalies but that's kind of um it's a job that's the job <laughs> kind of um but like even um the passes the passes like we want to keep the ball so we include the goalie like in possession so there's a couple of things what um, the people should pay attention for it well how much do you gear training and what you do with the guys to LAFC style because we, we've talked to Max a couple times and he said you know the biggest difference for me was I come from Vancouver where maybe 10 times I'm called upon to save the ball but they're lower opportunity lower chance opportunities most times and then LAFC maybe there's one big opportunity so do you actually train is there a way that you train more so for bigger opportunities or is it you're always doing a, a blanket approach how do you look at that, from it's, that it's, it's tough to to um, to do it in training um, it's more the mental the mental part it's like to be focused and stay in the game like the 90 minutes and just wait for the one play it's um it's more the mental mental side and we have like our goalies are are pretty good in that i must say like john mccarthy and um uh, and max and uh even thomas romero they are pretty strong dudes and mental pretty pretty strong so i don't have to do a lot with them at this part on the preparation side 
I think it probably goes without saying. Maybe it, it, it needs, maybe it doesn't. But uh, the goalkeeper is obviously the best athlete out there. They get to use every part of their body. Uh, how, does, how does one prepare that so that they're physically ready for, for all of that to be the predominant athlete on a team 99% of the time? Is that fair? Uh, <laughs> He's hating my questions. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> like, uh, like, they're not the best runners. So no. let's say that. But, but the game changed too, so they get included in the passing, in the possession. So um, the good thing is uh, Steve and um, Ante and, and Mark include the goalies a lot in possessions game, so I don't have to do that. So the fo footwork, um, uh, Steve include the goalies a lot, so that helps for me to don't to have like more attention, like for the diving stuff or more set pieces. Um, it's 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 getting more and more the goalies have to be good at and uh, I'm glad I'm now a coach so it's easier that's, that's changed a lot since when you played and yeah you, I mean as a coach I've had to adapt it started it to to include us as goalkeeper in the possession um, but it's way more right now I mean I see like max quality compared to my quality on the ball so it's a it's a difference that's for sure well now we get because again, I think the understanding of the goalkeeper position is so remedial from most people. They get fixated on one thing. So everyone's talking about goalkeepers that can play with their feet. And as you said, the still the most important thing is keeping the ball out of the back of the net. And then we kind of lose that. So I, I want to ask you, because you, you've mentioned it, kind of the progression. Where, where is the goalkeeper position going? Uh, you know, because I think we put too, maybe too much emphasis just on the feet and not enough on, there's got to be other aspects that are changing. And I want to, I'll follow that up with some talk about Max Odenheimer, old friend of the pod, because I know that he did mm. some goalkeeper stuff, mm -hmm. and I want to ask you about that. But first, yeah, where I, do you see it going? So first, Max, like talk about Max. When I came here, I met him also, and uh, we talked a lot about goalkeeper mm -hmm. stuff. And um, he has actually a different look at goalkeepers, what I never saw that way, what, what was it, interesting. Is this the presentation that, that he did? Did you get to see any of that? Yeah, I saw I saw, that. I, th I honestly, sorry not to interrupt you, just thought it was mind-blowing, because... Mm. It's so simple, but it makes perfect sense. It does, it does, and it helps. It helps and it doesn't. So okay. it's, it's, you always can use numbers, mm -hmm. can use presentations, but when you're out there, it's different. So, and you can compare every season like to the other. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, but the good thing is you can inc include a lot of his stuff in training, so that helps. So you can use it and it was a different way of thinking and okay. You never, you learn always, and it helped me to see the goalkeeping in a different way, and it was interesting, super interesting. Yeah, for those that don't know, Max Omerheimer put a presentation together. It's basically, the reason why it's simple is because it's basically saying, hey, we rate strikers on the way they can shoot and score in different ways. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk about goalkeepers on the way they can save goals in different ways, whether it's breakaways, long shots, collections, that kind of stuff. And I think you're saying some of it's useful, but maybe some of it's maybe too yeah. rigid? Because, like, it's also in depends. You, as a goalie, are that good as your defender are how they block the shot, okay. how which side they block from the goal, so I, I can change my position. That's all, they play all the little details, so it's always different with who you play together, the situation. It's always a little bit different, but it's useful. Mm. Okay. You've been here in the United States 2016 and evolved, obviously spent your career in Germany, but have, since that time here and now playing, being able to coach here at LAFC, how have you uh, seen it change? in uh, the United States, the way the, the goalkeeping has been approached, not only that, but the game is approached. Yeah, that's uh, like, I was actually, I played even 2013 uh, in the league. So uh, from 2000, oh, the I'm Fort Lauderdale. I'm not gonna interrupt, I'm just gonna hand you guys some. Oh yeah, thank you. A little, a little yeah. sweaty, it's a little hot out here, yeah. but keep talking. Cover it up um, like some so I love highlights there. Yeah. <laughs> With the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Oh, it's on, it was, yes, yeah. it was afterwards, yeah. 2014 even. Um, uh, it changed a lot actually, that's not, uh, it's now, almost 10 years, but um, the quality, the level, the whole league, how they, the stadiums, uh, the training facilities, it's, it's, it's growing so fast and the quality the same way, the level gets higher and um, it's a super interesting league. And uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, one of the most interesting league in the world. So, and, and it will be even better in five to 10 years. Uh, why, why is that? Is there certain things that you've seen that separate it from what you may be, what people may be accustomed to seeing in Europe or other parts of the Americas? Exactly, like the, the US is so big and like 
going to Texas is a different world. Going into LA is a different mm -hmm. world. And the mentality from the people are differently. Like even like going in stadium, like how they cheer with the with the um, home team, it's different. It's it's just the mentality, the different like how they take things. It's just different. And um, but have all the love for for football. So it's it's super interesting on this part. And uh, and um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a reason why Gareth Bell and Kalini is here and uh, other big stars that want to come in the MLS. So the league is just growing and it's super interesting. You have those, you hear those conversations, you hear those guys going over, they go, hey, they've heard about the league. What's yeah. it like in LA? What's it like in New York? Those kind of things. Yeah, and I mean, I get calls also like still from Germany and a lot of players want to come over there and they plan to do it. And yeah, the world is recognizing the MLS. Great to hear. You still keep very close tabs on your old club in Germany, Eintracht Frankfurt. I mean, they obviously won the Europa League. Uh, I'm actually ask, asking selfishly because my favorite team, Juventus, just signed a player, Kostic, who's a very good player. Wondering if you have any thoughts? It will, it will hurt, hurt Frankfurt a lot. So he was like for years now, um, yeah, our best. I, I say our still like because I played that long there. Um, Fair. No, you can. times there. You yeah, can you say can. that you, I, I, you I have you, carte blanche. Yeah, you earned that right. When Max and I say we about LAFC, people go, eh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it will hurt, but I totally understand when Juventus Turin is uh, calling and I guess it's also his last chance to play for a big club. So um, I understand that it will hurt us, but um, it's a good chance for him. And um, yeah, I mean, but still like what Frankfurt is doing the last couple of years, it's impressive. It's like, like even like from, from distance is... Um, yeah, very impressive and big for the city and big yeah, for I mean, the fans. How crazy did they go? Europa League's a big trophy. Also, by the it way, is. my and favorite. You went to I love the look. Yeah, yeah. It, it's big games. I mean, it's tough to to put it in words. Like the city, like even talk to the fans. It's those guys will be heroes for forever. But the fans is what stood out to me. I mean, obviously the games are incredible, but the support away, mm -hmm. and then obviously within the city when they're preparing for the final, I'd say it was. It's, it's always been like that with the. Yeah. The Eintracht fans, it was truly, if you haven't seen it, it would blow your mind, the support. I don't know, because maybe I'm, I'm over, like, because I played that long for the club, but I think it's one of the best stadiums to go to, best fans, best atmosphere in Germany. It's like, it's incredible how loud it is in the stadium. And, and yeah, Frankfurt had always, like, a way, it doesn't matter where you play, the fans are coming. It's uh, incredible, and it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but crazy good. We want to go to an eye track game. Hopefully, we can go with Oka so we can get you know access that's, everywhere. That's why we do this, so you become good friends with us. <laughs> anytime, you, 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 oh, yes. anytime. There you go. See, we got it on record. So, uh, just as we put a bow on this, um, you guys are preparing for these eight games here, and then the in the postseason. What has this journey been like for you in LA? Is this for your first year combining with this coaching staff? Because we see goalkeeping coach, they're with the goalkeepers, but there's much more to it. You're yeah. connecting with the defenders. Uh, just how you've been able to make those connections with the with this team and life in Los Angeles. Uh, first of all, LFC made it super easy for me. It is um, great people here, great uh, environment. Uh, it's I have just good word for the whole environment. It's uh, great, and uh, the coaching staff made it also super easy for me. And then was for me super interesting to see like. Uh, the philosophy from the LFC, how they play over years, and um, it's just a different way of thinking how I had it in Philly and uh, in DC. Um, it's just uh, with a lot of confidence, but in a good way. Yeah. And um, and uh, I learned already, especially I put under a little bit out of it because how he thinks like offensively. Um, uh, when he he talks, I'm listening. So, so it's I learned a lot there, and it's it's for me. I just I just be happy to be here, like with Steve, Mark. I learned so much, not just the goalkeeping side, also like the uh, how we play soccer, uh, football, and um, it's it's super interesting for me, and uh, I'm happy to be here. We do hear that a lot. We're still waiting for you Tighten to come on. Come on, Ante. But from Mark Dos Santos Ante and now from you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, you He's have too to. Cool. But maybe he keeps his secret, so <laughs> I understand True. that. Maybe. But we, we did hear that from Mark Dos Santos. I mean, you yeah. know, John's the boss, then Steve. But the way you guys work and the way you collaborate yeah. is something that Mark Dos Santos said he's never experienced it in any other destination yeah. in, his, in his career. Yeah, it's unique. It's um, it's we work we work hard, and uh, but we have also like time to joke around and have fun together, and that's important, I think and the people see that. 
Yeah, yes. Speaking of, Steve's number one pick, I gave him, I go, your staff game, who are you picking? Who's number one? I thought maybe it'd be John Thornton, this guy. Wow. Says he knows yeah, angles. There's also a reason for. No. Yes, I, 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 you're, especially if you're playing with the big goals, they're gonna, you're gonna be very. <laughs> no, he said on the small goals, you, you need Oka because he knows angles, he knows how to cut down uh, shots, he so knows how to pressure. So you're not giving yourself your playing credit enough no, no, because no. you're with your feet, you're ahead of the. Well, he lets, ahead of he your, lets Steve do the talking for us. <laughs> yeah. Oka, it's great to chat with you, and we appreciate your time. As I, as I told uh, Vince earlier in the show, when I first did a Bundesliga game, you were playing in it, and uh, it's, oh, no. it's odd to see it full circle to see you here, and uh, I know. We've seen the, the results with the goalkeeping as well. Thank you for having Ho me. Hope it's a long stay within Los Angeles. Uh, Oka Nikolov, the goalkeeper coach for, for LAFC. Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Rate, review, download, subscribe. And tell a friend, and we'll join you here once again from Eastern LA very soon. Oh, yes! They knocked on the door, and they finally kicked it through.